What's going on, YouTube? Y'all squad, this is your boy Yaka Tease. This is your review for Love and Marriage Huntsville, season four, episode 23. I want to say that it gave some stuff, but it didn't. I don't know. I really, I think because we get so much rehashing of prior stuff that when we actually get to what we need to talk about, I then become disinterested because that's kind of sort of what happens. But anyway, we're going to talk about what's there. There were some times where I just said I didn't care, but I'm going to try to give y'all the best that I got. All right. So we start off with Kimmy and Maurice. Uh, Kimmy is closing her first potential deal. Uh, uh, so with them doing real estate, she's doing title closings. That is um, <clears throat> one of many areas that are primarily in uh, Alabama that is underutilized slash underserved for people that look like us. So I'm like, okay, that's good. Love to see it. Love to hear it. <clears throat> but Maurice wants to rehash the last um, meeting they had. So I guess his whole thing is, look, we, if we want this scene <laughs> to be on the show, we got to talk about the show and not what we primarily got. Because she was like, what well, we're talking about now make money. What you want to talk about, that that creates confusion and discord and everything else. So anyway, Kimmy says that we are responsible for who we bring into our circle. That right there is a fact in general. And that's with relationships and whatnot. Like even in family dynamics, <clears throat> if you bring a friend into a family dynamic, whether it just be a friend, a significant other or whatever, you can't control that person, but you're responsible for that person's behavior and what it is they're saying because you brought them in. Nobody else did. So I get that. Understand it. And she says the Scott's brothers, in essence, need to police up their brother, Mark. Like you all are responsible for him. Maurice says that Mark never inserted himself. And when he was inserted, he would. What the hell I put? He will be a dog with the bone, pretty much. So, we'll talk about Mark momentarily. We'll, we'll talk about him in a minute. Because I was like, I feel you. But then I was just like, hmm. So, anyway. Uh, Kimmy uh, pretty much... Uh, hold on. Kimmy feels they need to try with Mark. Like, y'all need to put forth the effort. And... And this is one of those where I I was on the fence with this because I, I get her saying, y'all have to try. Because Maurice is just like, we know this dude. We know how he is. We've done this before. And nine times out of 10, 99.99% of the time, we ain't getting nowhere. Kimmy's whole thing is you at least need to try. At least say something. So, yeah, so... Kimmy dismisses Maurice. Maurice has a little, you know, wasn't a temper tantrum, but, you know, he was playfully having a temper tantrum, knocked over her pen pencil holder. I laughed at that because I've, I've often done that, especially in the military. Me and my shenanigans just, oh, this is what we're doing. It just go through and knock down stuff from the snack fun and everything else. So I, I've done that. It was funny to me. So we get Melody and Kiki. Uh, Mel is doing some product packing or packaging, I should say. Um... They haven't talked in a minute, so we have the Madonna recap, of course. And then um, <clears throat> then they rehash their dinner meeting. <clears throat> and Mel says she doesn't feel like... What the hell did I put? Like that people... Oh, she doesn't like how people act like they don't know what's going on. She's like, oh, really? That, that's happening? Oh, really? This person posted that? People acting as if they're oblivious. <clears throat> Kiki says she has something similar. So she recalls that one episode where it was all about the Scots and they extended family. Because I'm just like, how did we get here? I wasn't supposed to be here, but okay. And, you know, her talking about how Marceau whole thing is, if you say something, I'm pretty much going to air you out. It was a tit for tat, which I get it. Like, okay, you coming in here, so look, if you put my ish on the table, I'm putting all your ish on the table. I get it. I get it. He was very aggressive with it, but I get it. <laughs> I ain't bad at it. 
but that lets you know that he got some ish to hide. Because you could easily say that without being on a thousand, but the fact that he was on a thousand means that, um, uh, hmm, hmm, yeah, you doing some dirt. We already know that, right? Allegedly. Um, so then <clears throat> this is when Kiki actually tells us what her business was. And the and I forget where I heard a tinge to of this story where I believe somebody has said that, you know, like, I guess she was in her car, you know, have, I guess, tried to go to the hospital or something like that, just in the car. I believe she was, you know, under the influence of some type of prescription. Um, and I believe got locked up, something like that. Like, I heard something to that effect. I don't remember because it's been a while and I don't really keep up with any of these people. Not even, I don't keep up with any of these people outside of this show, so I don't know. When she lets us know that, you know, she was going through, had surgeries and whatnot, got addicted to uh, prescription medication, which, you know, you hear that a lot. So, you know, nothing uncommon. But what happened is, you know, because she got addicted to it, her doctor at a certain point is like, OK, I'm no longer prescribing this to you. Which, you know, is sensible because you do have some doctors where they don't care because they still want to make sure they get that money. So as long as your insurance going to pay for it, you can have all of what you want. <clears throat> but they said no. And she knew of other people who had similar medication to what she was taking. So she would go through and she felt, OK, well, if I take a little bit from them, they're not going to know, which they're definitely going to know, especially for those who, you know, know what they're taking, how much they're taking and knowing when okay consciously i have to submit another refill by this date to get it and you can and if you try to submit um a refill earlier than the window you ain't getting it which means that if somebody came in and took what took your stuff you just without you know what i'm saying depending on on the medication it could be dire so you know she said she admitted to her family <clears throat> and she went to rehab so she had gotten out of rehab like a few months before the uh, Christmas party that, you know, was being discussed. And she was just like, that was something that she felt should not have been mentioned. And in the grand scheme of things, in that particular instance, I agree. Now, if it was, you know, she, you know, was a crackhead, a dopehead, something like that. And she's liable to take anything in your house so she can sit here and keep up the fix. <clears throat> That's one thing. But the fact that it was just a certain prescription drug that, again, like, unless you have it in your house, you have nothing to worry about. Right. That really wasn't a reason to bring it up, in my opinion. Like, I get trying to protect your friendship, but it's, yeah, no, I, I, I didn't see that. But also, Mel had said, had revealed that they said it to her in a joking way, which typically some people do try to deliver like bad news or deliver things with a joke to take the sting off of it. But in Mel saying that to her, it doesn't really help the situation. And yeah, yeah, because Mel was like, yeah, make sure y'all put your peels up. So that was that scene. But Recovery did um, Kiki Wonders and you know, hey, she wants to sit here and try to help others. Good stuff. So now we get the three M's, okay? We get Mark, who is the eldest brother, Marceau, who is the second oldest, and no lies, Maurice, who is the second oldest, and Marceau, who is the youngest. This is where I lost interest <clears throat> because it, like there was this whole thing of there was no accountability where you told us the truth, but you did not hold yourself account or you didn't want to be held accountable for your actions. So Mark says um, he first asked about the incident at Badati. So he knows about it. And it was like, well, you know, it all started over people, you know, saying stuff online. And then that's when they saved way into him. And he says, I just defend myself. So here's where he told us the truth. He said he was having a conversation with Kiowa, who is Maurice's baby's mother, I believe his ex-wife too, on IG. Okay. So you're having a, what I would assume, private conversation on a public platform. Got it. Somebody recorded it, and it's probably because they remember seeing Kiowa off the show. So, mm, okay. And 
possibly things being discussed from the show. And I'm pretty sure Van's name came up from the show. So somebody recorded it and then somebody reposted it. So then he was asked, did he bring up Van? And that is when he said, yes, he did. They dated. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So if we're going to be technical here and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, Negro, you started this because you didn't have to bring up Vanessa on social media publicly. So pretty much anything that happens after that, bruh, you were the catalyst. So then he says, then the reunion happened. So if I, so pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, Carlos King asked, and that's based off of what was already out there. So you started this, Carlos asked Vanessa a question, and Vanessa said, no, I don't mess with you, this, that, and the third. And does somebody have to sit here and claim somebody they have relations with? Not necessarily. And she chose not to. That is her right to be like, mm, no. So obviously that hurt his feelings, that hurt his pride, that hurt his ego. And then he starts saying, well, does a friend buy tickets? Does a friend do this? Does a friend do that? Okay, bro, she didn't claim you. Like, seriously, get the fuck over it. Like, it's, it's really not that serious. But he is just so, mm. And then he says, well, people are attacking me. Now, I didn't see the live that he did with, uh, uh, what was her name? Kaiwa. I didn't see it. I don't want to see it. Because there's a strong chance he probably ran down on her. So if you running down on Vanessa, right? And up until this point, the most that Vanessa has done is be shady. That is it. Because he even brought up, you know, church woman, this, that, and the third. And I do feel that she probably does hide behind that. But if you come after this woman and she ain't did nothing. And, of course, people, when it comes to reality shows, have they, the people that they stand for and whatnot. Van ain't did nothing to nobody. So I can see people want to get you together. Because why are you coming for this woman and she ain't did nothing? And then... For you to sit here and say all the things she did for you, she ain't been nothing but nice to you. So you mad because she don't want to claim you. Okay. All right. But he says that people are attacking him and he wanted those involved to clean it up. Meaning wanted Vanessa and them to come back and be like, no, no, this is what this is. Da, 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 da. But again, bro, none of this would have, would have never happened had you not opened your mouth. I can't feel no sympathy for you. Anyway, Marie says he does too much. It's one thing to defend yourself, but it's another thing to go on, like, to go on the offense and then literally just start attacking people. Not a way to go. Marceau tries to give this BS um, analogy because Mar asks, how is my online presence affecting you? Mars, I already said that. And Mark says that he's not willing to give any apologies and he's not the bigger person. So we get Destiny and Tisha. This was a very, very catty scene. And I don't really have a lot to give y'all. Destiny talks about her alone, this relationship with her boy Moses and, you know, cooking being an issue where she, he wants her to cook when she sees him on the weekend. But her whole thing is, look, I'm cooking throughout the week for myself and my child. I'm driving to come see you. I'm tired. I ain't trying to cook. I ain't trying to do that. Cool. Whatever. Understandable. They rehashed the Madani thing. And, you know, um, Destiny acknowledges that this was a public thing. But there's a but there. There is no but, ma'am. Like, I understand what you want to happen. But it's a public thing. You shooting a reality show. Come on now. Come on. Just, just get over yourself. Uh, she says that, you know... Stormy came correct. I right, cool. Um, so nope, said that because uh, again, I'm trying to sift through the BS. So Martell apologized to Destiny, but um, uh, Melody didn't. Uh, Tisha brings up you know, uh, the purse that Stormy gave her, and Destiny was like, It was a flex, and you know, I told her, you know, that now I don't recall if she told her that it was a flex, I don't recall that. Everything else that she said in reference to that, I, I believe she did say, and she also lets us well, lets her know that Stormy wants to get the girls together, which we're going to finally see this next week. And then they rehash the comeback group meeting. I don't care. So now we end the episode where we have Tisha. I believe now she, it was, it's Mila's birthday. So I believe that is her child. I believe it's her child. But it's all the Scots. Okay. That's it. 
ain't nobody else but the Scots. <laughs> so, Marceau left the cake in the car. Now, it is summertime. It's in Alabama. It's hot. The car is hot. And he goes, say, this way, even the ice cream cake, sir. Sir, now, I, I don't know the overall composition, okay? But you, you don't leave stuff like that in the car. That's like leaving candy in a, in a hot car. You, you don't do that. I'm just like, okay, Marcel, we, we know you die father of the year, so it's all right. Wanda shows up late. She has said they already say happy birthday because y'all have allowed Wanda to think that she is, you know, that person that everything revolves around her. So there is a sense of entitlement there. They talk about uh, Wanda and setting boundaries. Wanda gives us this whole thing of I ain't talking about the kids. I just talked about this. She talked about my baby daddy. So I talked about her baby daddy. Whatever. So they want her to keep other people's names out of her mouth. Wanda tries to explain the way her behavior, which is so exhausting. And even when Scotty, uh, Josiah, and Terrence roast the review when they had her on it was the same thing there was no accountability and it was double talking and trying to you know explain away her behavior also before i forget uh they will they will have mark on for that rose review and i believe that is on terrence's channel so y'all know that's gonna be a whole hoot so y'all make sure y'all tune in back to the review um so then marceau says she should just when she gets online she should just be talking about wanda and what Wanda got going on, primarily her business. And I'm going to say this, he's right. He is right. Like, that is what you should be focusing your energy on. Because, again, you know, what you put, like, I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm let it go. Not even doing that. Anyway, um, he also says, if you stop talking about people, then you don't give them something to talk about. F to an extent, that is true. To an extent. Where if somebody is always reaching for a moment and you don't say nothing, eventually they'll stop talking. Now, they may resurface again to, you know, start talking more mess. But if the person that they are constantly bringing up isn't engaging with them, isn't giving them what they want, then it's almost just like, OK, you look crazy. Right. But uh, but here's the thing. Wanda has been doing this consistently. Mel was the only one not saying nothing. Mel didn't, you know, say anything until her child's paternity came up. That is when she said something. Um, and Wanda says she won't talk about the kids no more. I don't believe it, but that's that. Um, I don't care nothing else about it because I, I mm, look in the drain me. I, I gave y'all 18 minutes and I ain't want to give y'all that, but that's what y'all got. But anyway, I love y'all. I will do my best to get y'all Potomac tonight. Uh, so please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all. Yeah, for that. Bye. <laughs> get out of here.